Welcome back to Realism Overhaul, and welcome to the new year as well. To start things off for 2019, we're putting together a geostationary satellite network to forever end any connectivity issues in low Earth orbit. If you remember from about 10 episodes ago, we had two satellites in highly elliptical orbits that were supposed to solve this issue. However, the reality is, their ability to perform the task at hand, provide consistent and reliable comnet to Earth orbit, leaves a lot to be desired. They have since been deorbited as well as several other LEO satellites due to their specific missions being complete. Keeping space junk lower helps the safety of our missions and the frame rate of my PC, hence the creation of the new space program, Geosat. With current research development, making a rocket to carry a small satellite into a specific orbit of Earth does not require a lot of funds or head-scratching engineering. Its launch vehicle consists of a single stage and four boosters. The payload's upper stage consists of one Asterisk 1 engine, and later the use of a more efficient Asterisk 2 engine. And the payload itself being a small satellite with onboard thrust and attitude control, one Omni and two dish relay antennas, and four solar panels to provide power. Geosat's first launch was a test of the rocket's performance and more or less got to orbit perfectly fine. It then successfully put a reference satellite in geostationary orbit not only to prove it was achievable, but also to help with the launch of the next satellites by providing ascending and descending nodes, furthering the accuracy of maneuvers and thus saving on fuel consumption and decreasing delta V losses. A few small tweaks to the fuel mounts and the boosters though, uh, and we have Geosat 2 on the launch pad ready for takeoff and orbital insertion. A nominal launch, and we have booster separation. Gotta love that Karlov cross. Finally, reaching an apoapsis of 316 kilometers with a periapsis of 143 kilometers, Geosat 2 is officially in orbit, ready to undock from its launch vehicle. Two maneuvers need to be completed to reach a geostationary orbit. The first at the descending node relative to our reference satellite. Increasing prograde velocity here will end us up with an apoapsis of roughly 35 to 36 million meters close to the ascending node relative to the reference node. And uh, being at either the ascending or the descending nodes for this first maneuver is important because it will help us change our inclination to almost zero during the second maneuver. Um, Changing the inclination during the first maneuver would actually end up costing a lot more delta V, I believe, um, than changing the inclination of the second maneuver. Um, I have not really tested with uh, the first maneuver, but the second maneuver seemed the most likely, and I built the rocket designed around that uh, that plan.
The second maneuver is then a mix of anti-normal and prograde velocity changes, ending up with a circularized orbit with low inclination. During this burn, the upper stage burns out and leaves the satellite to complete its trajectory. After this is complete, all that is left to do is further refine our inclination as desired, and then alter our orbital period to be that of the Earth's rotation. This happens to be 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4 seconds. Once complete, we have a satellite that is completely still in regards to the surface of the Earth, apart from slight back and forth movement due to my positioning not being 100% perfect. One down, three more to go. Unfortunately, I ended up losing some footage here, some parts completely, but others uh, began to skip and stutter every few seconds for no apparent reason. Um, we can thank Elgato Game Capture for this, setting the video settings to all the way to the most performance and less quality does not fix this issue, and I have yet to troubleshoot it completely, but I'll be right on that. Um, but for what I did end up salvaging, the best I can do is just speed it up a lot to, mac uh, to minimize the stutter, which is, let's say, unwatchable at one times time warp. I'll state a basic summary of the Geosat program while this footage plays, however. Geosat 3 saw the first malfunction of the Geosat program. A center of mass issue occurred, causing RCS to do a lot more work than intended, which led to every last bit of hydrazine to run out on its way to maneuver number 2, which led to a dead satellite. This issue was addressed and fixed before Geosat 4 was built, and the cause for 3's failure is still wildly unknown. 4 and 5 had a nominal launch and mission insertion. Geosat 6 saw the first Asterisk upper stage have an engine failure halfway through maneuver 1, leading to a thrust to weight ratio loss, and the eventual failure of the satellite. However, this did not occur with the newly researched Asterisk 2 engine of Geosat 7, which successfully finished off the network. All satellites have one dish connected to active vessel, then one dish connected to the geosat to its right hand side, the omnidirectional antenna being able to reach the earth and anything in low earth orbit, uh, this providing exactly the kind of coverage we need. And just like the home and house satellites of the past promised to do, uh, we'll see the end of blackouts in low earth orbit forever. Hopefully I will be able to fix the problems I'm having recording at the moment, but until then thank you all so much for watching, and peace out.